Hey guys, we're in Seattle, Washington, a neighborhood called Ballard, and it's just beautiful. Like, look around, all these rocks and houses and stuff. I thought this would be the perfect place to check out the new 2018 Rad Power Bikes Rad Wagon. This thing has been completely overhauled since 2017. Used to have a steel frame, now we've got aluminum alloy. Still got this beautiful mid-step design, brand new battery pack design, a little bit more reinforcement going on with that rear end, so it's stiffer. It gives you plenty of blocking for if you add their smaller or larger pannier bags. We've got a padded seat accessory right here. We've got the deck hand, so you could have someone ride in tandem with you if you wanted. Even the seat has a handle, but this bike would be I think a bit difficult to maneuver and lift with that because it's 72 pounds. Most of these electric cargo bikes do weigh a bit more. This only comes in one frame size. It does come in two colors and I'm focused on kind of like the naked version of the bike. Whole bunch of accessories to explore on the orange one over there in a minute. The price is still $15.99. So this is one of the most affordable electric cargo bikes that I've seen really anywhere. And it's still giving you plenty of power, really good uh, weight distribution, a lot of accessories come standard, including these wooden kind of a, a deck board on top and then these sideboards, running boards. Uh, so even if you didn't have that pad, you could just put down your own towel or whatever and hold on to your friend if, if you really needed to. Uh, the one thing that's really interesting about this is that it has a 21 speed drivetrain. So we've got three chain rings up front and then a seven speed Shimano Altus in the rear. Altus is one step up from Turney, so it's like, yeah, it's a little bit more basic, uh, but it means that the cockpit has a bit more going on than some of the other Rad Power bikes. Seven gear shifter on the right with the SIS index shifter, kind of a thumb shifter, and then these three shifters on the left. Still got the integrated bell, love that, and we still got the mechanical Tektro disc brakes. They've got rubberized edges, four finger levers. They work okay. You know, one of the things I've seen more and more on electric bikes is hydraulic disc brakes, and they don't take quite as much like hand power to activate, but they do cost more. So balancing out cost and then, you know, using this around the city, you might have it loaded up with gear, uh, but on the other hand, 180 millimeters over here, that's, that's wider. That's what you'd see on like, electric mountain bikes or even just traditional mountain bikes the biggest rotor size i've seen is like 203 so 180 is front and rear not bad quick release up front i'm a big fan of the tires that they chose here these are 26 by 2.3 so they're a little bit fatter and they've got that checkerboard pattern i actually took it across the grass and got this thing a little bit muddy extra wide fenders they're plastic so if you bump them you know they, they aren't going to bend they aren't going to scratch and start to rust and again aluminum alloy frame not going to have to worry about that they did go with a steel fork though so it's extra stiff and sturdy also some vib vibration dampening quality um, that you get from that and then check out this pattern up front all of their power the rad power bikes for 2018 now have this kind of a bolt-on interface for adding a front rack and it connects directly to the head tube so when you're steering it's not like the rack adds weight to your steering or can dump side to side. They've gone even further and added a deflopulator spring. So that helps to keep the bike straight. Let's pretend you're back here like loading up the rack and, and the front of the bike is kind of tipped forward and steering side to side or something. You don't want that. You want the whole thing stable and that keeps that front wheel straight and just really firm as well as this big, big custom made aluminum alloy kickstand that folds down double legs. So again, the bike is straight, it's upright, it's ready for you to load it up. Um, definitely really thoughtful the way they've designed this thing. And they've gone with a zoom adjustable angle stem here, zero to 60 degrees. So you can put it up like we've done here, swept back handlebars. It gives you this nice upright riding position. Ergonomic grips, these aren't locking, but you know, they get the job done and they match, they look nice. And when I say locking, I mean, you could grab this and you could spin it and kind of crank it down it's one of those touch points that you could upgrade if you wanted to like go online and buy something we've even got looks like two 10 millimeter stack risers and a 20 millimeter so it's in it's in like the very upright position right now and the seats raised really high because i like to get that full leg extension there's a lot of adjustability here 27.2 millimeter diameter so if you wanted to replace that with something else round power bikes does sell a whole bunch of accessories again i'm tempted i want to go over there but there's still more to talk about 12 gauge spokes front and rear a lot of other electric bikes just use like 13 or 14 so 12 is extra thick and sturdy even the rims these are Weinman. they're reinforced double wall just extra sturdy and that's what you want for this sort of application you can also see a slap guard here so hopefully it's going to keep that frame looking nice i'm a big fan of the white one personally just because it's a little bit more visible from the side if you're riding at night you know you want to be seen by cars and they've gone the extra mile with lights so we've got an upgraded ascendo by spaninga and it's got 
two bright lights. It points where you steer. We don't have a suspension fork here, so it's not like it's gonna be bouncing around. It's, it's kind of, it's not really frame mounted, it is fork mounted, but again, no suspension fork. So that's something I think about like where and how are they mounting it. The neat thing about it is if you get that front basket, you can actually relocate the light onto the basket and they give you all the supplies to do that. Now that one's integrated, but the rear light is not. So you actually have to come over here every time, push this button. The cool thing is it has a flashing mode but you could leave it running or you could forget to turn it on at all. So thankfully it also has a reflector built in and it's positioned in such a way that the bags and everything aren't gonna block it. Hopefully, if you have a passenger sitting here and they have a jacket on, it could drape over. Just be thoughtful about this. You wanna be seen, especially if you have precious cargo riding with you. Um, so anyway, the lights are cool. This uses AAA batteries. Just keep that in mind. Nice to keep that thing going. I like the aluminum alloy Welgo pedals they've got. Big oversized platforms. They've got these metal knobs so you're not gonna slip off quite as easily. And then this plastic chain ring guard. So there's no chain cover, but I haven't really had a problem riding today. I'm wearing pants. And then this little box here, this is like the motor controller. And they say it's sealed, it's potted, it's designed to be really like water resistant. All their stuff is of course designed to be you know, it's we're in Seattle, it rains, it gets wet. The fenders are gonna help keep you dry, but this display is not removable. It does kind of swivel, but again, pretty well water resistant. And it has an integrated like USB standard type A port. So you could plug in your phone and use that for GPS or a music player, additional lights. Some people put like Christmas lights and stuff on their bike, tons of fun. And again, the battery pack, that's the superstar here. Rad Power Bikes has upgraded their battery pack. It's the same one used on all of their bikes now. It used to be 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour. Now it's 48 volt, 14 amp hour. So significantly higher capacity. It weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. So, you know, you look at the battery, seven and a half pounds or whatever, 15 pounds on that motor because it's a direct drive gearless hub motor, you get a little bit of regen power. So some of the battery power you're expending to climb, you might be able to kind of recoup, saves a little bit of wear on the disc brakes, and it's just so quiet and smooth. The motor design here, 750 watt nominal, and they didn't really give me a peak rating. It kind of, I think it sort of depends on how you ride this thing. 750 is the top rated like watt output for legal US use. So that's kind of interesting. And then in Canada, it's rated at 500 watts and that's their legal limit. So Rad Power Bikes has been expanding from the US to Canada and even Europe. And they're really trying to follow those local laws. And here in the US, we get like the top 20 mile per hour speed and uh, 750 watts. It's been working great. I have not been riding this fully loaded, but I have ridden with all the accessories. You know, we're probably at like 80 pounds or something at least with that. And I'm 135 pounds and it's been working just fine. Of course, with pedaling, you've got those 21 speeds so you can shift down and it's not a problem. Just pedal a little bit slower and give that motor some help. Okay, so coming back to the battery pack, I like that, you know, they've got this charge port. It's built right into the top very, very clear of those crank arms. So when you're pedaling or if this gets bumped or something, see how it's not gonna snag that wire? The charger is two amp. It only weighs 1.1 pounds. It's kind of standard, kind of generic. I've seen a very similar charger from uh, other e-bike makers, but a lot of times that charging port is just, it's kind of in the way. And then actually this rubber little cover thing, it, it works pretty well. There we go. It seats nicely, stays out of the way. I love that you can pedal this thing backwards if you're doing some chain maintenance or something without hitting that kickstand. It's just like a, a lot of little like finer touches. And then check this out, look, gussets and stuff. They've even got this down tube sort of stepped in so that the battery looks really nice. There's a lot of attention to detail going on, even the paint job. I like the colors. This is called like sort of pearl, pearl white, and it is a little bit metallic. Uh, just, it's kind of a nicer finish compared to before. Um, and then the wires and stuff, a lot of those are internally routed, kind of go through the frame. On the other side, we've got this key lock kind of a thing. And you know, you, you put the key in and you can pull the battery off, but you can also set this to kind of like locked. So if you're not at the bike, maybe it's at a rack or something, but you don't want people tampering with it. See right now I can hold the mode button and the display comes on and someone could, you know, mess with the throttle and, you know, kind of screw around with your bike you can actually lock the battery in the off position and then people can't mess with your display. So I love that. The display could still take a little bit of extra sun and rain and maybe scratching at the rack, but at least people can't mess with your bike. And they have this cool off switch. So see, now the throttle's not gonna work. So you can turn it into like a pedal assist only kind of thing. Just really neat little upgrades. Even the LED indicator here that shows how full your battery is, used to have a button in the middle and it kind of blocked it all. 
now it's off to the side. So a lot of nice little upgrades. This is a really custom pack. Apparently it's different from an industry standard pack I've seen before called the Shark Pack. This is something Rad Power Bikes designed just for themselves and um, seems like a, a pretty great solution in my opinion. And then I noticed that <clears throat> I think there's like three mounting points on this. So it's not just two, like down here we actually have bottle cage bosses. It's not mounted to those. It's mounted to like purpose-made bolts that are further apart and there's three of them. So it's not gonna, it, it just feels more sturdy, right? And that's, that's something you want, especially with like a utility built electric bike like this. And we've got disconnects back here for the motor cable. The motor cable is tucked inside. So if the bike tips or if someone's kind of got their feet here, you don't want to snag these wires. You don't want to bump this stuff. And they've got this skirt protector. So this plastic thing, if you have a passenger back here, or maybe you have those bags, you don't want those rubbing on your tires and getting, you know, dirty and snagged. It's just, it's well done. Okay, that's like the bike. Um, I want to show off some of the accessories before we have to actually take a ride. So we've got the orange one over here. Check this out. I'm gonna power it up. Comes to life pretty quickly. And then I think I hold the up hour to change, okay, up and mode to turn on the backlighting. And that headlight, pretty bright and it is aimable. This is what I was talking about where it's mounted hanging below the rack and they give that little extension cable. This is their big basket and then there's the support basket. You have to order those together. Look at, again, gussets really, really well done, uh, just extra sturdy. They have the optional seat post suspension, the SR Centur NCX. That's something I'd probably get for myself because I have a sensitive back and neck. They've got this flashing rad like light thing. It's, it's actually pretty cool, but in this case it would be blocked because we have this caboose, like this aluminum alloy tubing structure that's surrounding two YEP saddles. And those are fitted onto the YEP windows. So you can see they just sit right down into this rack. You don't have to get anything extra. They automatically fit. Really love that. So imagine there's two kids riding here. They can hold onto that inner bar. And if you pass near a wall or branches or whatever, their fingers aren't gonna get scratched. They're gonna be protected. So this is a really, really neat design. Nice to see that. Coming back to the rear light again, you'd have to come down here and activate that manually. And if you're distracted by your kids and stuff, that's just one of the areas where I think it could be improved a little bit more. It'd be nice if it's integrated, but then you've got cables like running all across the bike, more things to get kicked, more expensive. We're talking about $15.99. This is a pretty affordable electric bike. One year comprehensive warranty. Rad Power Bikes is kind of a direct seller. So, you know, you go to their website, you buy it and they ship it to you. Now they're working with Velofix. So Velofix can assemble, deliver, and help you kind of get fitted. It's kind of a neat feature. You can see that the, the tubing here on the rear kind of slopes down and then that's where it connects to those uh, running boards and stuff. Just really nice. A lot of cool accessories, a lot of different options going on. Um, I'm here with Mike Radenbaugh, one of the founders of Rad Power Bikes. How's it going, man? Hey, good, Core. How are you today? I'm good. I, you know, we're out here braving the cold weather, trying to stay dry. Um, can you tell me again about shipping and about the Velofix relationship and how much it costs to do those things? Yeah, so even though these you know, these bikes are available at fifteen ninety nine for just a hundred dollar upcharge, you can have it hand delivered to your house. Yeah, pre assembled, fitted to you, and they also come back thirty days later to do a free tune up and, and kind of check wow. out. Your it's just a hundred bucks for that. Yeah, yeah. So we you know we cover a lot of that cost on our end to kind of. Uh, foster that relationship with Velofix, and that's why we become a premier partner with them. Okay, and what if you don't want to do that? You're like, I got wrenches in my garage. I do it myself. Sure. So the bike comes almost fully assembled. You just toss the front wheel and pedals and kickstand on. Okay. Um, so very easy for for the the do-it-yourselfer people at home. Well, how much is shipping in that case? Uh, shipping's free for free shipping all throughout the U.S. All throughout Canada. And Canada, congratulate! Yeah. yeah, you have the Vancouver like headquarters thing now. Yeah. So the bike ship from within Canada, so mm -hmm. it makes it easy for Canadian customers. Is it the same motor? It's just sort of spec slightly different from for Canada. Exactly, yeah. So the 500 powers, watt. the the wattage is reduced and the motor controller. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think it might be time to hop on these things and go for a ride. I'm going to take this one because it's got all the cool accessories. First, I'm going to walk through the display. So I already did the backlighting by holding mode and up. I think if you hold the down button, it turns walk mode on, which you know that can be kind of handy if you're going through a crowded spot and you don't want to hop on the bike and you're just trying to stabilize it but it's heavy so walk mode you can hold up and down to enter settings but otherwise you've got five bar battery indicator an odometer you can switch to trip meter by pressing mode speed if you hold the up arrow that's what goes from average speed to max speed and then just current speed so i'm going to leave it on that and then we've got mode so 
zero through five levels of assist, and they also call them, you know, eco, standard, power, and speed, and then down here, watts. So there's a lot of cool information happening, and then the little light infographic. The throttle, again, there's this little button so you can you can deactivate it if you want to, if you're not a fan of that. That's, that's kind of nice, nice to have that feature. And sometimes I've complained about these big thumb shifters, but if you're wearing gloves, they're, they're gonna be a little bit easier to interact with. And since they have that throttle on off switch down here, if you had trigger shifters, they, they wouldn't fit. So I think they've been pretty thoughtful about this. And even though it's, it's more of a basic part compared to what I see on mountain bikes and stuff, for an application like this, it makes a lot of sense. And of course the bell. Love that, awesome. So I'm gonna take it down to level three and let's do this. There we go. Okay, pedaling along, not doing too bad. I'm gonna go up this hill since, you know, I wanna demonstrate the power of that motor. Got the turning radius. Okay, I'm not pedaling. Oh. Got to turn on the throttle first. There we go. And there is a little bit, you know, I do feel some frame flex happening here because this one's loaded up. Just got the seats and everything on the back. But when it comes to normal riding and pedaling, you know, it's actually feeling pretty good. This is... There we go. It's just super quiet. These are some of the quietest bikes. When you compare the, you know, hub motor like we're using here to a mid-drive, Midrest can be more efficient, they can be great climbers, but you, you usually don't get a throttle. They're usually a little bit louder and they interfere with your drive system. So when you're shifting, it can add some tension and some wear. Um, and in this case with 21 speeds, I think they made a good choice going with the hub motor. about halfway up this hill. It's it's not the world's steepest hill, but we're definitely climbing. And I just wanted to test the motor out. Um, I'm in the, the middle ring on the front so I can climb and let's do it. Just get the bike forward a little bit. There we go. Make sure the throttle is activated and then gun it. There we go. Slow and steady. It's definitely doing it. We're definitely climbing still smooth and quiet you know six seven miles per hour not bad you know and i only weigh 135 pounds and the thing's not loaded up but i didn't pedal at all and you know we we're actually able to to get up a little ways it's... nice buddy hey. pretty upright as well like you know the handlebars with that adjustable stem swept back even going over these bumps it's quiet the ergonomic grips feel pretty good we got the defloppilator keeping our wheel straight it feels pretty pretty comfortable with the 26 inch wheels you know you get the lower attack angle and then the slightly wider tires here a bit more air volume whoa boy <laughs> Uh, stability test here for such a long bike it's actually pretty stable okay guys even though we got the skirt guard right here I'm trying to get you as close to that motor as possible it's super quiet and it's got that regen so I'm gonna brake a little bit you should be able to maybe get an idea I'm also gonna switch through the gears here Shimano Altus along the bike path, uh, 
nice little view of the drivetrain and some steering. There is a bit of frame flex. This one is not loaded at all, but you know, the new aluminum frame's a little bit lighter. If I do this, it's not too bad. When you start to load it up, any of these bikes, you know, they struggle a little bit because it's so long, but they've got that reinforced front end with the gussets and stuff that we talked about. It's handling pretty well. And then the chain seems to be good because they've got that triple chain ring up front. So it acts as a guide, even though this doesn't have the plate guides like the other Rad Power bikes. Um, the chain's doing pretty well and that slap guard is keeping it, keeping that nice paint job intact. A lot of the electric bikes I've been seeing lately have one by drivetrains, meaning only one chain ring and then maybe like nine or 10 in the back. In this case, we have 21, so we have a triple up front. And I was asking them like, you know, what's the deal? And when you're carrying heavy cargo, it's really nice to have that range. And then those smaller steps between the gears, um, especially if you're just pedaling for exercise or maybe you run out of batteries or something. So this is the only bike in the Rad Power lineup for 2018 that does have a triple. And I was just gonna shift through that a little bit. Again, we have Shimano Altus in the back, which is kind of one step up, and then just says hyperdrive up front on that plastic guard, which is nice because I'm wearing jeans today, so I don't want to get my pants dirty. And it's it's surrounded pretty well. It's like a nice, you know, seems pretty sealed. One of the other things I wanted to talk about with the a gearless direct drive motor here is yes, it does regen and that's nice. Whenever you pull those brake levers, it's gonna slow you down a little bit. Again, save some of the wear on those brake pads. I was talking to Mike earlier and he said, you know, we were talking about hydraulic versus mechanical. These are a little bit easier to adjust by hand if you're a customer versus having to go to a shop and getting them bled and stuff. The bigger rotors, they give you plenty of uh, surface area and a good mechanical advantage for these 26 inch wheels. But then as far as the motor goes, there is a bit of magnetic resistance. So see when I spin this wheel like that, it's not spinning quite as quickly as like the front wheel would spin if I just lift it up. And that's just the, the magnetic resistance there. So I wanna be completely fair because a lot of times I'm looking at mid drives, I'm talking about the noise they produce and stuff. These are quiet, but they're heavier, 15 pounds, but you get regen. In this case, not quite as fancy as like, uh, ohm uh, they have a bionics motor and stuff that you can actually arrow down and you can simulate like drag and, and give yourself an extra workout these are simpler it's just kind of on or off and they do have the motor inhibitors built into those brake levers so anytime you pull that it kills power to the motor and that's kind of nice because this does use a cadence sensor it's a 12 magnet design pretty high resolution you can kind of see it back here those 12 magnets so it's not like it responds when you push harder it's just an on or off thing and then it gives you as much power as you've set up here in pedal assist so i'm in five it's giving me the most power the neat thing is you can override at any level including zero take it all the way down and i can use the throttle so it can be kind of a throttle on demand you get full power and that's something i really appreciate it's not like you have to press up 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 to get full power you could be riding efficiently in like level one or level two and then you need to catch up with your friend up there or climb a hill and you can zip up to speed with the throttle so it's a, it's a really neat system all the different features work together and frankly it's pretty well balanced mike was picking it up right here earlier kind of from the back of the seat and the middle of the bike and was able to lift it up so we got back to the warehouse and i just realized that they've done another improvement here since the frame is aluminum they've actually added a stainless steel torque arm you can just barely see it there and it's not just on the rad wagon but you can also see it over here on the new rad city step through really clearly and that's just a great way to spread some of the force out this is a 12 millimeter axle right here threaded with nuts on the end and a 10 millimeter flat section so again that keeps it from spinning out and you know ripping this cable so i just really think they've done a great job of cable management and strength here the torque arm is only on one side that's the side where the motor's closest to the dropouts. 
And here's the charger. So you can see it's pretty small, relatively lightweight, just 1.1 pounds, two amps. So, you know, kind of, kind of standard what I see on a lot of bikes. And then we've got the key. So Mike's going to help me get the battery pack off. He's already unlocked it. You just slide it up. I was trying to figure that out. I was like, does it come up or, you know, it, it actually slides up just like that. So they're able to keep that top tube relatively low. And really it's, you know, they're packing a lot of cells in there. That's what the bottom of it looks like. And the fuses right here. So those are replaceable and you can keep this thing on the road. It's a pretty sweet pack. Well guys, I think that's it. I've had a lot of fun exploring town. This is a new area for me. Mike, thanks for the extra help. Uh, everyone, that's the 2018 Rad Power Bikes, Rad Wagon. Really, again, just a useful bike. I've seen some other videos. I've talked to some people who own this. Families, people who have to carry cargo around, um, even people who just commute and you don't wanna wear your backpack or something. For the full write-up on this with all the different specs and stuff that I do, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, chime in with your questions or feedback. Maybe you've owned the old one and now you're excited about the new one or whatever. I'll do my best to help you out. And as always, ride safe.